We got nine more questions here today. We get to question 65 overall. We ask you to play along on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Guys, this is a good one. Question 65, which player is under the most pressure? I think Russell Westbrook has a lot of pressure on his shoulders. He doesn't want stars leaving him again. Melo and Paul George can leave in the offseason. He's going to be 30 next year. Uh, the Thunder have kind of scraped the cupboard bare a little bit to get Paul George and Melo. Let's say Russell Westbrook turns 30, these guys leave. You don't want his prime years of that extension without stars around him. So he's got to foster a nice environment to get all these guys involved because the last couple of years that hasn't happened under Billy Donovan and the Thunder. They've been last in passes, dead last in passes. Melo's got to get the ball. Paul George's got to get the ball. Obviously, Russell Westbrook has to get the ball. He's just got to foster a great environment there to keep those stars around. Why do you think, though, he signed that extension then now? If, if you think, like, perhaps he's worried that these guys might leave, why well, would he sign now? Is it just for the money? I don't think he's worried. When I say he's under the most pressure, I know Russell Westbrook says, I'm not under pressure <laughs> at all. <laughs> he's extremely pumped to be in Oklahoma City. I, I don't think he feels it at all. And, and if... Guys don't want to play with him. I think he says, screw it. But I'm sure he'd rather have those guys be there. And he definitely has to change his game. I think that that is the pressure because the way he's played last season, obviously, is not going to happen again this year. And like you're saying, even when Durant was around, it's not going to work having three guys who really need the ball. And you know Russell's going to be bringing it up most of the time. So he's got to find a way to make it a more egalitarian approach for the Thunder. And honestly, he can be better this year. If he's not shooting the ball 30 times a game, his efficiency is going to go up. He's going to have crazy assist numbers, I'm sure. Again, passing to guys who can actually make shots on the perimeter quite a bit. I think it's going to be exciting to see Russell Westbrook, but it's going to be a big-time change for him. Yeah, the excuse in the fourth quarter last season, particularly in the playoffs, is not going to fly this year because he's got guys he can trust. What and, was the excuse? Well, I don't have the teammates that I can trust. That's right, basically, to, yeah. To hit these and, shots. and he was just he was just throwing the ball up from anywhere, just thinking, oh, I'm going to take these guys. I'm going to get the win by myself. But right. now he can't do that, and he has to learn, I think, to do that early on in the season. Because if, Mel if Melo and Paul George feel like, man, we came here, we're trying to help him out, and he's not involving us yeah. in the offense in the crunch moments, that's not going to be for a cause for a great locker room in Oklahoma City. Great pick. I like the Westbrook. Anyone else feeling the pressure heading into the season? Well, I think James Harden actually has got a little bit of pressure on mm -hmm. his shoulders this year, particularly how the season ended in the playoffs last year for the Rockets. You've got to look at Daryl Morey. In the, in the last few years, he's gone out and gotten huge superstars. Dwight Howard, things didn't work out there. He's going to get Chris Paul, another huge superstar. If things don't work well for the Rockets this year, the spotlight is going to turn on James Harden because you, a general manager can only do so much. And on, when you're on the court, it's on the players to make things work. And James Harden, runner-up MVP, we know he can play. We know he's a fantastic player. But also, like Westbrook, he's going to have to adjust his game to allow Chris Paul to flourish as well. Chris Paul is not the sort of guy, he's not a, a huge scorer, but he needs to feel control and he needs to see that these two can work together and pot yeah, potentially yeah. Hard contend. Harden in the regular season has never been a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Harden in the playoffs the last couple of years, and you even look back at that series against the Spurs last year specifically, he's struggled. And, and maybe it is a bit of a case where he's just running out of gas by the end of the year. He doesn't yeah. have that really excuse now with Chris Paul, but right. he was... He was honestly quite, he was pretty brutal in this series against the Spurs. Yeah. They, 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 he, he only averaged 25 a game for him. Horrible, you know, bad shooting percentages, a lot of turnovers. He was asked to do a lot, but you're right. Now Chris Paul is there. There's no excuses, really. It's going to be tough to make it work. You still got a ball handling responsibilities mm -hmm. and pick and roll, who's running and all that. But I'm with you on James Harden being under a little bit of pressure here. Yeah, there's sort of similar scenarios. Chris Paul and Westbrook, stars have joined them. The difference is Chris Paul is going to have the ball in his hands a lot. Mm -hmm. While Westbrook is the one going to be having the, right. his ball. So James Harden is going to play off, I think, Chris Paul a lot this season. He's going to be pretty pumped to do that, I assume. What about, He's going to have to be. What yeah. about Kyrie Irving? That's, to me, the guy that is under the most he pressure. He said he didn't want to play with LeBron exactly. James. Exactly. It's self-inflected no. pressure. He left LeBron James, the best player in the world, a team that was going to the finals three times. Probably were going to go back again. He would have had an easy path to the finals. He's replacing a beloved player in Isaiah Thomas, and he has to be great. This is the first time in his career he's really going to be under a lot of expectations as the number one guy. First time playing in a, a system, because Brad Stevens has a different system than yeah. he's been in playing with the Cavs. I think it's going to be a major adjustment for Kyrie to play for a team that moves the ball a lot. He said that's what he already likes in Boston. That there's a lot of ball movement. That hasn't always been his strong suit. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if he can kind of subsume his game into a team concept rather than just trying to get a lot of buckets and maybe a couple of dishes here and there. I think Danny Ainge is under pressure too because he had all these assets for so long and wouldn't move them. And then all of a sudden he kind of blew up a team 
that made the Eastern Conference mm -hmm. Finals. And this could be the Celtics' best chance to dethrone the, uh, the Cavs because LeBron... This year? Well, it could be. I mean, last year, remember... He's got these guys for a while, though. He's got Kyrie and yeah. Gordon Hayward for a while. Yeah, but I'm just saying because last year, everyone was like, you've had chances to move to get perhaps Jimmy Butler, perhaps Paul George. He didn't make those moves. Now, we don't know exactly what goes on in those conversations, why these other teams wouldn't make the trades, especially when they got lesser talent. But I think, uh, I think Celtics fans are like, well, Danny Ainge had all these assets. We've got to be at least as good as we were last year and at least make the conference finals. A couple other names I'll throw at you guys. LaMarcus Aldridge, uh, another guy that yeah, struggled, yeah, yeah, yeah. struggled yeah. when Kawhi Leonard went down with an injury in the playoffs. He didn't step up. And obviously Kawhi, especially with everybody else pairing up, and Chris Paul and Harden and all the Thunder guys and the Warriors already got their guys and other teams in the East. I mean, Kawhi needs some help. So he mm -hmm. needs LaMarcus to get back to being mm -hmm. that all-star LaMarcus. I think you could throw in maybe an Andrew Wiggins, who Definitely. just signed his massive contract extension. Um, now there's a little bit more pressure for him to make it work with Butler and Towns. And maybe even Chris Tapps Porzingis. Now that Melo is gone, you're in that New York media where all eyes are on you. He is now being asked, at a very young age, of course, to be the star player on that team. You know, expectations for the Knicks are not super high. No one's expecting them to win 50 games. A lot of people don't even have them making the playoffs. But he needs to prove, I think, pretty early on here that, oh, yeah, yeah, they made the right decision here. I'm the future, yeah. I'm the guy, and let's go with me. 